Did you know that there are three things every man over 35 needs to do to keep his metabolism working properly? And it has nothing to do with drinking more water, taking cold showers, having green tea, or going in saunas. Because sure, those things may boost your metabolism, but even if they do, it's only going to be by about 1% to 2%. But let's be real for a second, because you're not here for the small 1% wins. In fact, I expect you feel how I felt when I was in your shoes. Angry. Because I was putting in the work and doing everything right, but nothing was changing. It felt like my body was working against me, and I bet you felt that too. Well, the three things that I'm going to share with you today are real game changers. But before we get into that, if you don't know who I am, my name's Doug and I've been a personal trainer and a nutritionist for the last five years. And I help guys over 35, just like you, get in the best shape of their life. All right, let's not mess about. Here we go. First up, we need to fuel your metabolism, and that means changing what you're eating. Because even if you're in the calorie deficit, you're gonna find it hard to burn fat if you're not eating properly. I expect you've noticed that after 35, heck, even after 30, your metabolism just doesn't work the way it used to. You're eating the same, you're working out, but it's just not paying up. Well, there's something absolutely critical to revving up your metabolism, but most guys overlook it. And no, starving yourself isn't gonna work. As you get older, your body naturally starts to lose muscle. And when that happens, your metabolism takes a hit. This is why it feels like you're doing everything right, but the fat just won't budge. And that's why getting enough high quality protein into your diet is a complete game changer. We all know that protein is what helps you to build and then maintain lean muscle mass, but did you know that the more lean muscle that you have, the more efficient your metabolism is? Protein also helps to keep you full, and if you're full, you're far less likely to snack on the junk, and it's more thermogenic than carbs or fats. That means that your body actually burns more calories processing and digesting the protein than it does the other macronutrients. Even when you're eating, you're already burning more calories, making protein a fat loss powerhouse. So you want to make sure that you're getting plenty of high quality protein from lean meat, fish, dairy, and eggs. And aim for at least 0.8 grams of protein per pound of body weight that you want to be. So let's say, for example, you want to weigh 180 pounds. 0.8 multiplied by 180, I've just checked the maths, is 144 grams of protein per day. And if you're struggling to hit that target, don't be afraid to top up with protein supplementation. I'd recommend a whey protein isolate because it's a low calorie shake and essentially it's pure protein. And trust me, you are going to be shocked at how much easier fat loss is as soon as you start focusing on getting more protein into your diet. All right, now that we've fueled your metabolism, we need to fix your workouts. You've probably been told that you need to do cardio or HIIT training to boost your metabolism. Nope. In fact, studies have shown that long runs can actually reduce your testosterone. And HIIT training, it's an injury waiting to happen. So you might be thinking, What's the fix? How do you get your body back into fat burning mode and ramp up that metabolism? Well, to get the best results, to boost your metabolism and to maximize fat loss, we need something simple. We need something effective and we need something efficient. And the good news is the answer is right in front of you and it's resistance training. Because when you focus on building muscle, you boost your metabolism. Because the more muscle that you have, the more calories that you burn 24 seven. Resistance training is like an engine for fat loss that keeps going long after you've finished your workout. It doesn't just burn calories while you're exercising. It keeps you burning fat even when you're at rest. But you've probably heard that before though. I mean, let's be real, me telling you to lift weights, it's not exactly new advice, is it? But I've got four ways that you can transform your workouts that are gonna give you better, faster results that you can actually sustain. First up, you wanna focus on compound movements. Those are the multi-joint exercises that use your biggest muscles. So anything like squats, deadlifts, lunges, hip thrusts, push-ups, pull-ups, overhead press, bent over rows, chest press, are just a few examples. Those exercises are win-win because they help you burn more calories and lose fat faster. Because the bigger the muscle, the harder your body has to work. The harder your lungs have to work to breathe in all the oxygen. The harder your heart has to work to pump that oxygen in the blood to the muscle. And the harder the muscle has to work to create a big enough contraction for you to be able to lift the weight. Secondly, you want to work smarter and not harder. You don't need to work out every day. You don't need to spend three hours in the gym to make amazing progress. And you definitely don't need to be doing 10 exercises every workout. So this is what I'd recommend you do instead. Three well-structured 45-minute full body workouts each week. Pick four to six exercises focusing on the compound movements we just spoke about. Use lighter weight than you normally would. And rather than doing three sets of 10, like everybody else in the gym, 
do four sets of 15 to 20 reps. Because think about it, if you do three sets of 10, that's 30 reps, right? But if you're doing four sets of 20 at the extreme end, that's 80 reps. So you're doing nearly three times the volume. And what you also wanna be doing is cutting your rest periods down from two to three minutes to 45 to 60 seconds. And because you're only doing four to six exercises, you're gonna be spending a lot less time moving between equipment and loading and unloading weight. So if you structure your workout in this way, you're gonna be training all of the major muscles at least twice a week. You're gonna be doing nearly three times the volume and you're gonna be getting in and out of the gym in less time. So by piecing all of this together, you're gonna to be working smarter and not harder. And you're not gonna be compromising on the effectiveness of your workouts. Thirdly, you wanna be using progressive overload. To get fitter and stronger, you need to be doing at least one of these three things. You need to be lifting heavier weight over time. You need to be doing more reps or you need to be adding more sets. Now, adding more sets is not the most efficient and effective way to do this because obviously it's gonna make your workouts take longer. But progressive overload really is that straightforward and simple. It's not about mixing up your workouts every single week, and it definitely isn't about spending three hours in the gym every day. Last but definitely not least, you wanna be doing the opposite to what everyone else is doing. And that's because 95% of people in your gym don't have a clue what they are doing. They don't know how to lift with correct form. They definitely aren't training hard enough and they're not even following a program so the simplest instruction that i can give you is to do the opposite to them train hard make sure you're lifting with correct form and follow a program you really want to make sure that you're in control of the weight and the weight isn't controlling you if you're lifting weights that are too heavy for you it means that instead of putting mechanical tension on the muscle you're putting the mechanical tension on your joints and that's bad for two reasons. Firstly, if you're not putting mechanical tension on the muscle, the muscle can't grow. And secondly, if you're putting the tension on your joint, you're far more likely to get injured. All right, so we've dialed in your workout plan and we've got your diet sorted. But there's a final piece to the puzzle and most guys overlook it but it's huge. In fact, I consider it to be the foundation of health. Now, I wanna ask you a question, but you have to be honest with me. When was the last time you got more than one solid eight hour sleep in a row? I get it. You might have young kids. You're probably working every hour of the day because it's easy to talk about sleep, but it's not so easy to actually get it, is it? But I have to be honest with you. So here's the truth. A lack of sleep is destroying your metabolism. When you're sleep deprived, your body produces more cortisol, which is the stress hormone that signals your body to hold on to more fat. Not only that, but poor sleep messes with your hunger hormones, making you you crave junk food and overeat the next day. It's like a one-two punch against your metabolism. Less sleep equals more cortisol, and more cortisol equals more hunger and less energy for those workouts. And the result? slower fat loss, no matter how hard you're working. Sleep is one of the most high leverage things that you can focus on because of all the amazing downstream benefits from it. So, how do you fix this? Well, when it comes to your sleep, I'd encourage you to look at it this way. Tomorrow, starts tonight because all the things that i just mentioned energy stress hunger they are all determined by decisions that you make tonight so to improve your sleep we need to focus on three things how long you're sleeping how well you're sleeping and how regularly you're sleeping now how regularly you're sleeping is the easiest of the three so we might as well box that off right now the science on this is pretty clear cut if you go to bed and wake up at roughly the same time every day give or take 30 60 minutes you're going to feel better and you're gonna sleep better. Now to improve the quality of your sleep, we need to optimize your sleep environment. That means that you want your bedroom as cold, dark, quiet and well ventilated as possible. So what I want you to do is get yourself on Amazon and add these three things to your shopping basket. Blackout blinds, earplugs and a fan. And for ventilation, as long as it's safe for you to do so, sleep with your bedroom door open. And if that's not an option, as long as you don't live in a loud neighborhood or a loud city, just sleep with your bedroom window open. And then last but not least, to make sure that you're getting enough sleep, we need to focus on your wind down routine. So the first thing to change here is rather than setting an alarm for when you wanna wake up, set yourself a bedtime alarm. An alarm that tells you it's time to start winding down. Now the time that you set your bedtime alarm is gonna be dependent on the time that you wanna wake up the next day. Let's say, for example, you wanna wake up at 7 a.m. You wanna be asleep, not in bed, asleep by 11 p.m. so that you're getting, ideally, eight hours of high quality sleep each night. So the absolute latest in that scenario that I would set your bedtime alarm for is 10 p.m. And I'd also recommend that you follow something called the three, two, one rule. This is where you stop eating three hours before bed you stop drinking two hours before bed and you come off all your screens, whether it's laptops, phones, or TVs, 
an hour before bed. To get into a deep, restful sleep, our heart rate has to be at a resting level. Eating is a metabolic process that raises your heart rate. It requires time and effort for your body to digest the food, so give it that time. And as we all know, drinking fills your bladder. So if you cut it out two hours before you get into bed to go to sleep, you're far less likely to wake up in the night and have your sleep disturbed. And blue light from all the screens that we have in our life affects our body's ability to produce melatonin, which is your sleep hormone. Now I've taken you through a lot today, but being really honest with you of everything that we've talked about, I would say this is the biggest game changer. If you really focus on this, if you start putting together several good night sleeps in a row, you will notice a massive difference. And not just in terms of the obvious stuff like your energy levels. I'm talking about in terms of how you feel, your appetite, your stress, and your metabolism. Sleep is the ultimate metabolism booster that ironically most guys are sleeping on. When you fuel your metabolism with high quality protein, when you optimize your workouts with resistance training, and when you prioritize your sleep, you're giving your body everything that it needs to torch fat and to get into the best shape of your life, no matter how old you are. I really hope you found this video useful, but if you are serious about taking your progress to the next level, then click here and watch this video next, where I'm gonna break down my full diet and workout plan that helps me stay shredded after 35.